Hello, I'm Edward St. Jay. I'm your host here on Night Peak. We take a look around the state and around the region and uh, bring on newsmakers and entertainment is upcoming too. We, we plan to bring you some of the great bluesmen of Mississippi in the weeks upcoming. And uh, with that in mind, we are interviewing tonight Ms. Peggy Brown. She is the president of Hit the Road Entertainment. It's an agency that represents a number of these great bluesmen. You know, when you look around the state, of course, we have uh, so many uh, different uh, cultural uh, icons, you know, actors and writers and musicians, and some of the greatest uh, exports we have music-wise are the bluesmen of Mississippi, who are so appreciated in other places across the world, Europe, uh, Japan. When I was in Baton Rouge doing weather a number of years ago, I interviewed uh, Rafe O'Neill, who was a Baton Rouge blues man, and his son, Kenny Neal, is still going today. And um, anyway, so I was at Rafel's house, and, uh, and he said, you know, an interesting thing happened the other day. He said, uh, I looked out of my window, and there were a, a number of people standing out on the road looking in and pointing to my house. So I went out there. I said, what are y'all doing? And it was a group of Japanese people, and they came running up to me, and they fell down, and he said, the great Rafel Neal, we have all your records in Japan. And Rafel told me, he said, I didn't even know I had records in Japan. <laughs> but, but anyway, but that's sort of the situation. Um, it's a great cultural export, and, uh, and, and, and therefore, uh, we, the state of Mississippi is uh, paying tribute to the great blues men now. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk to Peggy Brown about all of that and uh, the blues markers and the blues trail and all that stuff. Uh, and we'll meet some of the artists that she represents and see some musical clips of these artists. And these are some of the artists we hope to have on the show coming up in the weeks ahead. So stay tuned. This is Nitique. We'll be right back with Peggy Brown after this. Since 1849, Carter Jewelers has been a part of Jackson's rich history. Over 163 years later, we've not only survived, Carter Jewelers has flourished. From generation to generation, we've established a tradition of excellence. Our reputation is built on customer satisfaction, service, and trust. Every piece of jewelry is hand-picked, so you know you're getting the best value. Nobody says I do like we do at Carter Jewelers. Come see us and be part of our history. Stop paying expensive repair bills now. When you own a car, SUV, or truck, sooner or later it will break down, and that will cost you thousands of dollars. Just one transmission job could cost over three grand. A new engine could cost over four grand. Did you know that the odds of your car breaking down are greater than your being in an accident? You wouldn't drive without auto insurance. If you own a 2002 vehicle or newer with less than 125,000 miles, a vehicle service contract from CarTection.com could save you thousands of dollars. Qualifying is easy. A custom plan is created for you. You select the coverage that's right for your vehicle and budget. Call for a no-obligation risk-free quote now. Your covered repairs will be paid directly to your mechanic for you. Get the coverage you really need. A vehicle service contract from CarTection.com. We'll keep you on the road with a coverage you can count on. Call for a no-obligation risk-free quote now. Call 800-708-9923. That's 800-708-9923. Ingalls Shipbuilding is hiring electricians, structural welders, machinists, chip fitters, pipe fitters, and pipe welders in our Pascagoula, Mississippi site. Signing bonuses available for pipe welders only. Positions are union represented. Come build your career with Ingalls Shipbuilding. Go to www.huntingtoningles.com slash careers or call 888-935-1507. Well, welcome back to Nitique. We've got Peggy Brown with us, and Peggy is an artist management person. She manages some of the great blues artists here in the state. Uh, thank you for coming today, Peggy. Thank you. I appreciate you being here with us today. Thank you for having me. Now, okay, let's start at the beginning. Uh, an artist management concern, uh, Hit the Road Entertainment. Mm -hmm. How did you get into this line of work? Um, well, it was circuitously, but anyway, it, it came from me being interested in taking guitar lessons. And then I started booking the musician that I was taking the guitar lessons from, 
and um, then I started booking several other acts and then this one young man came along who um, Jerika Singleton who I hope we'll talk about because he's just awesome and he wanted me to manage him so I then got more into management specifically with him because he's made such a name for himself already that we could get a booking agency I didn't have to handle the booking for him so then I moved into artist management for him and I've been um, manager for King Edward King Edward Antoine the King Edward Blues Band for a while but I still do booking for him as well so I actually wear several different hats as artist management I also do promotion and publicity um, particularly for King Edward um, the label that Jerikas is on does promotion and publicity for him so I don't necessarily have to do that but so for King Edward I wear many hats as artist manager and uh, keep up this Facebook page and all that sort of stuff uh, typically in larger companies there are many people who wear all the different hats in that company and mine is a smaller company at this point so I handle I wear all the hats now there is uh, such a great demand worldwide for this music mm -hmm. and it's, it's a cultural export of Mississippi and uh, why is that why has it become why is it, does it resonate with people from all over the world Europeans Asians everywhere that's a good question too but I think it resonates with people that aren't from here because let's go back to the people that live here for the people that live here it's the, the music may be taken for granted mm -hmm. particularly because artists the artist Joe Schmo well he just lives down the street from me he's just Joe Schmo but people from Europe go oh my gosh Joe Schmo and they appreciate him because they don't know him as just the friend from down the street and so their appreciation of the music is probably greater for that one reason but then I think because of where the music came from historically in Mississippi a lot of the people that grew up hearing this music as kids didn't want to like it because of the connotation that it had as being race music and so they grew up with that and it's like I don't, I don't want to like that music people that didn't live here in Mississippi didn't necessarily grow up with it with that stigma of it being race music and so they've adapted it, love it, and, um, and I, isn't that so like human ma nature? If you didn't grow up with something, right. you're probably going to appreciate it more than the person who was stuck with it forever. Right. Well, I often think about things uh, when I was growing up. For example, maybe in prior generations, like my parents or grandparents, they, may, they might have looked at things differently. But when I was growing up, well, I can remember specifically, even today, you know, uh, Jimi Hendrix is one of my mm -hmm. heroes, and mm -hmm. you know, and it never occurred to me that he was black, you mm -hmm. know, or that he was not white or whatever, because he was just a, the greatest just guy. Just the greatest musician. And the same thing. Yeah, if, yeah. And really, the same thing exactly. with Muhammad Ali. I mean, right. If you were growing up, white, black, whatever color you were, Muhammad Ali was the greatest boxer. Exactly. And he was our hero. And and you know, but the thing about Muhammad Ali, if we get off on that for a second, he was politically uh, sophisticated enough to not only be a great boxer but also push his agenda mm -hmm. which ended up uh, that and other things that were going on pushed the cultural revolution that we mm -hmm. experienced during those years which mm -hmm. I think it was a cultural revolution mm -hmm. I think everybody probably would agree to that at this point whether we knew it at the time or not things changed during those years right know? right and uh, but back to the music you know the uh, the the music is re revered all over the world and uh, and it's right here among us and it, it started right here right. among us you know th when the Beatles came across and, and the Rolling Stones uh, they were basically uh, bringing back to our, our music yeah, back our, to the, us right our music back um, to us with which, a different flavor which which a yeah. lot of people didn't even realize at the time right I mean. It was really something how right. they seduced America with our own music. With our own music, and then it was cool, and and, was cool. and that's how I came to my interest in blues in particular because I heard those songs the Rolling Stones did, and then to know, oh my word, that that wasn't an original with them, they were copying something that came from here, and then I'm not from Mississippi. I've lived here for thirty something years, so I might as well be from here. I've lived here longer than I lived in Florida, and that's where I was born. So. 
my appreciation of what I've found that people that aren't from Mississippi, as I said, seem to appreciate the music more with a different appreciation. I didn't grow up with it. And I heard all those wonderful R&B tunes on the radio. And of course, there was never MTV when the dinosaurs roamed the earth when I was in high school. And so what you heard was just what you heard. You made up your own stories and pictured who was singing it. And I didn't even really see pictures of who was singing it. So I didn't have a clue that this was a, a black group or a white group. I mean, I just love the music. And so I promise you, I've had some friends that have been over at, to my house and we've watched some things on TV. And I will tell them that I never knew that that was a black group singing that song until maybe five years ago. And I'm really old. And so I just didn't know that. It didn't, it didn't matter. It didn't really matter. It was the music that touched me. And I could sing the lyrics, and I loved the beat, and I loved to dance to it. And so it, I didn't know who had done it. It didn't matter what the color was to me at all. So um, I think maybe that's some of the appreciation that people from other places have for the music, too. I remember when I accidentally somehow discovered B.B. Uh, King. Yeah, uh, the uh, the thrill is gone. I remember yeah. that song particularly, but uh, it was because there was a group called Wet Willie, which yeah. was a, a exactly a southern <laughs> right. rock group. Southern which rock I was group. a fan of. Yeah, you know, yeah, love like, Wet Willie. You, you remember Wet Willie? Oh yeah, love they were them. a great blues yeah. band, rock and roll blues band, right. and uh, from Alabama. Right. And I think at the warehouse in New Orleans, growing up, I saw them play. Uh, if, I, if I may, if I remember, maybe BB uh, King played on the bill one night or whatever. But I discovered that song, and yeah. that was. And that's, that was my indoctrination right. into right. it, you know. Uh, y some of your artists mm -hmm. go back to a time in Jackson when we had a club called the Subway Lounge, mm -hmm. which was a, a blues club, and it attracted older folks, black folks, white folks, and college students, and everybody got together, and they would play music until 5 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, th right. that was a famous location here in Jackson. Where it was. And I never got to go there, so all I've heard about it are, would be from, well, the guy that ran it, Mr. Jimmy King. He's just a dear, sweet person. And I've been with him for several interviews when he talked about the subway and how he started, it, started those hours in particular. And, um, and then I've talked to some of the musicians who used to play there, King Edward being one. He's one of my artists that I manage. And then um, King Edward's drummer, Rick Lewis, was the regular drummer for King Edward. And then um, the other band that played on the other two weeks when King Edward didn't play, um, the House Rockers. I know a lot of those musicians too, so I've only heard the stories about how it was, and I just I'm so oh disappointed that I didn't get to experience it because I would love to have had that experience. But the stories they tell about it being dark and cramped and everybody elbow to elbow and you had to go outside to the house next door to get your um, bucket of beer and and um, and there was there weren't any problems about fights and stuff mr. King was right on top of everything but he said he never had any problems mm. <clears throat> and I've heard people say that had really nice cars that at first they were concerned about driving down into that neighborhood and parking their car but there were several <laughs> local guys who would wander around the parking lot and if you slipped them five dollars, they'd go and watch your car all night, make sure that nobody broke into it. So their cars weren't broken into. It just wasn't a problem. But it was a melding of the races about the music. And, and, and that's a, what it was about. And at a time when that wasn't really the case necessarily. Exactly. I, I went a couple of times, and it would be all night long, and uh, no alcohol there was sold. So you go next door and knock on the lady's window, and she'd perk up a window and give you the beer, right. take the money, and close the window. Right. It was really something. Right. And, uh, but yeah, it was like a submarine. Everybody was like sardine, like a sardine can <laughs> in there. Everybody was crammed in. Right. But uh, but yeah, that was an interesting. Thing. Music brings people together. Exactly. The music brought people together, and right. still does. Right. Still does exactly. So what has been your experience with your artists that you represent? Like for example, King Edward, w w the Europeans and the, the folks in uh, the Asian world, they, have, they, they, they totally get it, don't they? They love they, the artists. They totally get it. They love him. They love, and um, we've had a couple of offers to go overseas. He's not been, as he goes, as he says, across the big pond yet, but we are passport ready, 
and we're working on a couple of offers to get him some other places and I know he will be loved and adored because when they come through Jackson and come to where he's playing or um, other places where he's been booked people just love him and to see his expression when he plays now he is of the older class 77 he's one of the I think one of the older blues musicians left in Mississippi in that older class and he's lived the blues so he knows the blues because he lived it. It's just his life. That's all he's done since he was about 20 years old, is play this music. No other job. This has been his job, is to play this music. And he lived it for Pete's sakes. He, was, he came up in those years when it was terrible for black people, in Mississippi in particular. And he left and went to the West Coast and then went to Chicago. And it was a tad better in Chicago for him. But um, that's what I like to say about him, is he's not playing at the blues. He's playing the blues because it's in his heart. He, he lived it. He's still living it. And so we've got a clip of King Edward. Okay. And we've got a clip also of another performer. Is it Jerika Singleton? Jerika Singleton. So he's a younger blues player. Yep. And he's making waves out there? Huge waves. He's just um, signed on the Alligator label. And that's really big for a 30-year-old guy. And Jerikas is carrying the music forward. A lot of young people are loving his music and attaching to his music because it's, it's the blues, but it's kind of a melding of hip-hop lyrics mm -hmm. and uh, relevant today lyrics. And folks are just loving it. So Good. So we're yeah. going to meet him, too. We've got a Good. clip of him, too. So awesome. we'll be right back, and okay. uh, thank you, Peggy, for being with us. It's yeah. a, a very insightful uh, discussion, and we're learning a lot about uh, mm -hmm. what's happening out there with the blues. Oh, thank you. So we'll be right back with Nitik. Stay with us. Welcome back to the show. I'm here with Peggy Brown from Hit the Road Entertainment. Mm -hmm. We were just talking about, before the break, some of the artists who represent King Edward and Jerika Singleton. Now, uh, we've got a clip of King Edward, and I guess you would uh, classify him as uh, one of the traditional blues players, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. he, he sort of plays Chicago blues, Chicago um, blues. electric blues. Mm -hmm. So he's not just Delta blues, but he can really play some of those old Delta blues songs really well. But he, I think you would probably characteriz characterize him more Chicago blues style. Okay, we've got a clip of King Edward performing. <laughs> I would say that uh, <laughs> the king is looking mighty young. I mean, <laughs> he he's a young, he's a young 77. He is a young 77. To see him, you wouldn't think he was 77. No, you really wouldn't. No. You know, well, I mean, to perform, you've ha you got to have a lot of energy to y yes, get out there and do that. And uh, you got to have a young heart, too. Yes, you, you know, do. I mean, to get out there and, and want to, you know, it's a lot. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's an outpouring of, uh, of emotion and everything, you know, so. And he has a new CD out that's it's called uh, um, King Edward, 50 Years of Blues. It was produced by Brian Brinkerhoff from California. So we're real proud of that. We uh, recorded it in Nashville. 
and it's just a, a, an exceptionally good CD for him. How would one buy it? These days, you know, everything is on uh, the internet. Would mm -hmm. one buy it via uh, an internet source? It's not there yet. Um, we're, we're hoping to get that there real soon. It just was released. So, yes, so far you can get it from King Edward or from me. I see. And yeah. what is your website URL? It is um, hittheroadentertainment.com. And you can find out uh, about your various artists that you represent, all exactly. that, and book them to whatever, right there. Exactly. You can Great. contact me through that website as well. well. We were talking a little bit about the uh, the younger generation of blues yeah. artists, and Jerika Singleton is, is he a native Mississippian? Yes, Clinton, Mississippi. Clinton, Mississippi. And he's on the Alligator label. Is that uh, a big label in that's blues? That's the most prestigious blues label. Yeah. And he just, he's been on there almost a year, and that's huge for a 30-year-old. And uh, tons of... Um, I say tons. There are a lot of Mississippi artists that are on that alligator label, but they don't still live in Mississippi. They're people that mi migrated to Chicago. Jerikas is the only Mississippi artist that still lives in Mississippi. And it's exceptional that he was signed at age 29. He's now 30. And he has, he's true to the blues as far as the way the music is played, but his lyrics are, um, he grew up in rap. He was a rap artist at first, but he wanted to play the blues and grew up playing guitar in his grandfather's church since he was age 15. And so he's got that gospel meld, that hip hop kind of meld, the um, funky blues stuff. And he is just blowing up the blues circuit. He's been to Canada twice, getting ready to go back for the third time. We've got already gotten some offers for Europe for next year. Um, already booked on 12 festivals for 2015 all over the United States with two pending in Europe. So I, he's just, he, he's exceptional. And I, I can't say enough about him. And I'm not saying that just because I'm his manager, but he is about to be the next big name in blues. Okay, well, let's take a look at the clip. This is Jerika Singleton. Yep. <laughs> see what you mean. Yeah. He's a great player. And he yeah. sings too, right? Sings, yes. So uh, yeah. he, that's a lot of bookings coming up all the way through 2015. Mm -hmm. A bunch of festivals, uh, even Europe. Already. That's yeah. great. Is there a, a group of younger blues men moving forward as, you know, to keep the blues tradition uh, alive? Um, Gary Clark Jr. is a few years older than Jerikas, and so he's already started making a name in that. And um, Selwyn Birchwood, from Florida, was signed a few months later with Alligator after Jerikas, and he's 30 as well. So um, he and Jerikas are kind of going some of the same places. There's a band from Tupelo, Tupelo called Homemade Jams, and um, they've been playing now for several years. They're siblings, and um, they have just been on the blues circuit for a really long time, more traditional blues. But um, yeah, those are our younger ones coming along, which I think is wonderful to bring the younger audience back to the blues because I think they were lost for such a long time. And um, there's been a lot of discussion about the genre dying. Uh, I don't think so. No, it, no. it, it will not. It's too, mm -mm. it's too important and too, too basic to the fundamental, uh, uh, fundamentals of pop music. I exactly. Mean, it's, it's, the, it's the fountainhead, really. Exactly. You know. Peggy, yeah. thank you for being with us. Yeah, thank you. I, it's I gone really so quickly. It. I know it. It's a, it's a, it's a, a, we're because we we're having yeah. fun. You know? Yeah, that's right. So thank you for being with us. And mm -hmm. uh, what is your website one more time? It's hittheroadentertainment.com. Okay, good. Well, thank you for being with us. We're going to be right back after this. 
since 1849, Carter Jewelers has been a part of Jackson's rich history. Over 163 years later, we've not only survived, Carter Jewelers has flourished. From generation to generation, we've established a tradition of excellence. Our reputation is built on customer satisfaction, service, and trust. Every piece of jewelry is hand-picked, so you know you're getting the best value. Nobody says I do like we do at Carter Jewelers. Come see us and be part of our history. Ingalls Shipbuilding is hiring electricians, structural welders, machinists, ship fitters, pipe fitters, and pipe welders in our Pascagoula, Mississippi site. Signing bonuses available for pipe welders only. Positions are union represented. Come build your career with Ingalls Shipbuilding. Go to www.huntingtoningles.com slash careers or call 888-888. 935-1507. Well, we're here with Peggy Brown from Hit the Road Entertainment. We've been talking about the blues and how it's been an export uh, uh, all worldwide for Mississippi. Tell us, here's some magazines that have been recently uh, published. Where is this one from? That's Blues and Rhythm UK, featured tons of musicians from Jackson area. That's the United Kingdom, mm -hmm. and then Jefferson. The right? same articles have been written up in Jefferson. That's from Sweden, Jefferson Sweden, Blues. Sweden, and another Jefferson here. Right. Ma the Maple Blues? Uh-huh, Toronto. That's Toronto. where Drakus played. So these are, this is what's happening This all one's over the world. from France, ABS. Drakus has a big article in there. Wow. Living Blues is... Um, a, uni a United States magazine, and then and this is from the UK as well. It's it is a worldwide thing. Jerichus is in that one as well. So That's I mean, they're everywhere. They're not just local Jackson musicians. It's amazing. What a what a wonderful thing that we are exporting. Well, thank you again, Peggy. Thank you so much. Bye and good luck with everything. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us. We'll see you next time on Nike.